Unit four of the AP calculus exam is rather broad. It is on conceptual concepts of differentiation where you are looking at related rates, you're looking at linearization, you're looking at position velocity acceleration, and then also needing to be able to apply the first, second, third derivative, be able to take derivatives of complicated functions and be able to understand what those functions and derivatives mean if they are positive, negative, concave up, concave down, increasing, decreasing, at a extrema, at a POI, etc. We are going to focus on related rates. So a related rates is essentially a chain rule with respect to time. So what that means is that we are looking at derivatives of functions with respect to time. So we used to look at derivatives of a function with respect to dx or dv. Well, all related rates will be with respect to dt. When setting up a related rate, we typically set them up using five steps where you draw a figure, assign your variables, find the equation that you are going to differentiate, differentiate said um, equation, and then plugging in and solving for the unknown. Let's look at an example of that. So we have water running out of a conical tank at a constant rate of two cubic feet per minute. So right there to me, that's hint number one. It is cubic feet per minute. It is running out. So the cubic feet tell me it's volume. The running out tells me it's negative. So my dv dt is a negative two. The radius at the top of the tank, so again, it's a conical tank, so conical means cone. So we have a cone-like figure whose radius at the top is six feet. The height of the tank is 12. So we can use the relationship between the radius and the height to take this from two variables to one. So it says the radius at the top is six, height is 12. How fast is the water level sinking? So it is draining out the bottom. We're looking at how fast is the water sinking at the instant when the water is five feet deep. So we are looking at h equals five, and we are looking for dh dt. So the volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h. Our relationship is that the radius to the height is six to 12, so that simplifies to 1 half, so that means that the radius is half the height. That's important because I can now get rid of radius in terms of my equation, so I have volume equals 1 third pi, 1 half h squared h, so that gives me 1 third pi, 1 fourth h cubed, which is 1 12th pi h cubed. I'm looking for dh dt, so I'm going to find dv dt. So I get 3 twelfths pi h squared dh dt. So again, there's that chain rule and related rates using dt. I know dv dt is negative 2. 3 twelfths reduces to 1 fourth. 
the height we are looking at is 5. So again, substituting in what I know, the height is 5. The dv dt is negative 2. So I get negative 2 equals 25 pi fourths dh dt. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So it gives me negative 8 over 25 pi dh dt. The units would be feet per minute. There's only one dt. dh is linear, so it's feet per minute. A train is traveling west toward an intersection at a speed of 100 feet per second. A car is traveling north away from that intersection at a speed of 70 feet per second. There is an instant at which the train is 35 feet from the intersection and the distance between the train and the car is not changing. Find the location of the car. So what I like to do is draw myself a little picture. So the train is traveling west, which means it is coming from the east. So we'll say the train is right here and traveling in. The car is traveling north. It's going away. We'll say that Z is the distance between them. The train is X and the Y is car, just because that's the normal X, Y, Z planes. So it says the train is traveling west toward the intersection. So that means that it's coming to the point. So the distance between the train and this intersection is getting smaller. So we'll say dx dt is negative 100. The car is going away. It's dy dt. So let's say it's a positive 70. We are looking at the point when the train is 35 feet from the intersection. So X is 35. The distance between the train and the car is not changing. So that's my DZ DT. And that means it's zero because it's not changing. So again, we have a lovely triangle here. So if we have a triangle, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. And then we're going to find the derivative of that. Since everything has a 2, we can cancel that out. So that leaves x dx dt plus y dy dt equals z dz dt. dz dt is 0, so we can also 0 that out. x is 35. dx dt is negative 100. Y, well, we don't know why, do we? So we have Y, we are no dy dt is 0, or is 70, and z dz dt is 0. So what we're looking for is actually Y. So we take negative 35 times 100 uh, plus 70y equals 0. So we get 70y equals, since you're multiplying those, you can 
actually just add them to the other side. So you have 35 times 100. We're going to divide that by 70. What's nice is those zeros are going to cancel. So now we have 350 divided by 7. Well, 35 and 7 are nice. They divide evenly, so you get 5. So what we end up getting is 50 feet. And what that means is that the car is 50 feet north of the intersection. So with related rates really comes understanding F, F prime and F double prime. That's the last part of unit four. So we have a function is increasing, decreasing, has an extrema, is concave up, concave down, and has a PPOI if the derivative is positive, negative, zero, DNE, increasing, decreasing, extrema. So an extrema is kind of like a conditional. This is always a critical point. It's an extrema if there's a sign change. And then that would be true for here as well. That's even why this has the PPOI. It's only a POI if it's an extrema. Or on the second derivative, you have a sign change, not the DNE. So let's look at some examples. We have, consider the function f of x equals three times the quantity two minus x squared to the fourth power. Is f of x increasing or decreasing at x equals one? Justify your answer. So what I did in order to justify my answer is I found the derivative. So the derivative is 12 times the quantity two minus x squared to the third power times negative two x from the chain rule. And then what I did was I combined like terms. So I said negative 24 and 12 gave me negative 24 x times that quantity. And then what I did was found the derivative at one. The derivative at one is negative 24. So since f prime is negative, f of x is decreasing at x equals one. Okay, so similarly it says, is f prime increasing or decreasing at x equals one? So now here again, we have that same original f of x function, and we are going to find its derivative again. So we have to take that negative 24 quantity two minus x squared cubed and find its derivative. So you get negative 24 uh, 2 minus x squared cubed minus 72x, same quantity, times negative 2x. Then what you're going to do is simplify that down till you get number one. And then all we really care about though is, is that value positive or negative at the second derivative one. So since it is positive, if the second derivative is positive, then f prime of x is increasing at x equals one.
Find the equation to the tangent line for the function f of x at x equals 1. So again, considering that same function, okay? So what we need to do is find f of 1 with the original function. So what you're doing is plugging in f of 1 into 3, 2 minus x squared to the 4th. But instead of an x here, you're going to have 1 squared. So 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 to the 4th is 1. So we get that f of 1 is 3. Then you're going to find f prime of x, which we already found. It's negative 24x, 2 minus x squared cubed. And then you're going to find f prime of 1 which we already found, it's negative 24. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, y minus three equals negative 24 x minus one, which could become y equals negative 24 x plus 24 plus three, which is negative 24 x plus 27 and that would represent the equation of the tangent line. Okay, and then it says for what values of x does f of x have a horizontal tangent? Well, horizontal tangents occur at the extrema. And the extrema can be found by finding when f prime of x is equal to zero. Because basically if you have a extrema on f, then its derivative will have a slope of zero at that point. And that should make sense. So what we're gonna do is set the derivative equal to zero. So in doing so, we are going to get that x is equal to zero when the beginning part's equal to zero, and that we get it's equal to zero when two minus x squared cubed is equal to zero. So, Again, here, that's rather simple. You get x equals zero. Over here, we got a cube root both sides. So cube root of zero is zero. So then you um, add your x squared and you get x squared equals two. So you get x equals plus or minus the square root of two. So we have three extremas. All right. That pretty much sums up that problem. We're gonna look at one more FRQ for unit four, which is another um, kind of graphical position velocity related rates problem all merged into one. So it says, um, the figure above is f prime. Find the values of f that would attain a relative max. So it says find all values of x at which f attains a relative max. So again, we know that a maximum occurs uh, when two things happen. The first thing that needs to happen is that the derivative needs to be zero. So we have one, two, three points at which the derivative is zero. The second thing that needs to occur in order to have a minimum is that the derivative, again, so if you think about a minimum, here's my zero. If it goes from increasing to decreasing, then that means that the derivative goes from positive to negative, or if the derivative goes from negative to positive and then zero, then um, 
you will have a minimum. So we are looking for when the derivative goes from negative to positive. So this is positive, negative, positive, positive. So at five, we have no sign change, which means no extrema on F. At negative five, we go from positive to negative, which means this is a max. And at negative one, it goes from negative to positive, which means we have a min. So at x equals negative one, the function f will have a relative min. There's my answer. However, it says to justify. So my justification has to be given to me. So my justification is because f prime, I don't want to talk about f. I don't know anything about f. I know about f prime. So f prime changes from negative to positive at that point. Justified answer. Part B. Find the values of x at which f attains a maximum. So again, we kind of already hinted at this. The maximum is going to occur at x equals negative 5 because f prime changes from positive to negative. at that point. And then part C. Find all values of x at which f double prime of x is equal to zero. So the second derivative will equal zero when the derivative or, yeah, the derivative is decreasing. So this is saying, when is this negative? Well, the second derivative is negative when f prime is decreasing. So again, the second derivative is negative when the first derivative is decreasing. So since this graph given to me is the first derivative, so this graph is decreasing from negative seven to negative three. I know the negative three because it gave it to me and then it increases from negative three up to two, given to me. And then it decreases from two to five. So my intervals are from negative seven to negative three. from two to three, and three to five. Why did I have to write the two to three? Because again, it is given to me that I have a vertical tangent at x equals three. We know, or should recall, Vertical tangents are not differentiable. 
So the graph is not differentiable on its entire domain. Since it's not differentiable at three, we can't exactly say it's decreasing at three. So this right here would be worth one point, and this right here would be worth one point. This would be two parts to the problem. And again, they're looking for you to pick out this given piece of information here and putting this piece of information in your answer. The last thing it might ask you would be something like, okay, where does the absolute maximum or minimum occur? So the absolute maximum or minimum will occur at a point in which um, we have our max uh, or mins on the derivative. So we would need to be able to check our endpoints, know our function, talk about area under the curve, etc. Thank you for listening and hopefully you have some more clarity on related rates and f, f prime, f double prime graph connections. Don't forget to look at that table when you work on your review. And remember, related rates are always going to be with respect to time. Thank you.